good afternoon you wee bastards and welcome back to War Thunder with Koala. So today we're continuing our series on potential new light tank, scout tank and armoured car additions to the various nations and this one's going to be an interesting one because today we're covering the Russians. Now in other videos in this series I've gone over some changes and reworks to the scouting ability that exists already for light tanks in War Thunder, except for the British. But in this video, I don't so much want to rehash what we've already said, so if you want to refresh yourself on what we've changed about the mechanic, or perhaps you're not sure what I mean at all if this is the first video of the series you've seen, then go check out the French Armoured Car video where we covered the Panhard EBR and other such vehicles. There'll be a link on screen, but not in the description, because fuck you guys, you don't deserve it. No, I'm just kidding. Check the card on screen or the first link in the description to go check out that video. And of course the previous one in the series on British light tanks, the one I'm definitely most keen on seeing. To run you through the changes extremely quickly, we've made scouting much more relevant to the meta of the game, much more useful to friendly teammates, and also much more rewarding, which in turn raises the respective battle ratings of each and every vehicle able to use this ability because they're able to adopt a purely scouting role and still be as effective a teammate in the game and earn just as high a reward afterwards. So when I balance up certain scout vehicles, and it seems like I'm putting them quite high comparatively, remember that all scout capable vehicles will be rebalanced according to my plan, and uh, if you want some more context, go and check out the other videos. So, Soviet light tanks, scout tanks and armoured cars. I say Soviet, but some of them are actually from the Russian Federation. This is going to be interesting, because there are actually a ton of options for tech tree or premium armoured cars and light tanks, many of which I had never actually heard of. I'm sure I'm going to miss a few options here, so I apologise if some hidden gem you wanted to see doesn't get mentioned, but we're going to start out somewhere I wouldn't normally start with this series, and that's at reserved here. In my own opinion, the BT-5 is probably the best reserve tank out of all of them. I mean, compared to the French, Japanese, Italian, hell, even the American and German reserve machines, and it's quite significantly better. Honestly, surprisingly enough, I think its closest competitor to a reserve tank is the British A-13. The Brits actually have the highest penetrating reserve tank gun, 88mm penetration on that 40mm pom-pom. Now, the Russians don't have the biggest gun at reserve tier either. That award goes to the Japanese 57mm on the I Go Kill Myself, but that 57mm... Its APHG has less penetration than a 50 cal. It is fucking dreadful. How on earth does this thing compete with the BT-5? It does get a heat round with over a 50mm penetration to be fair, but don't get me started on the French reserve tank, the AMC-34, because this thing... <laughs> it has 27mm max penetration. It can't even penetrate the width of its own fucking barrel. It physically cannot even penetrate an M3 Stuart from the front, a battle rating 1.3 light tank. There are battle rating 1.0 AA vehicles with more penetration than this. A Dishka has more penetration than this. And it takes like 7 seconds to reload. Yeah, good luck starting your French tech tree grinder. <laughs> The BT-5 goes over 50 kilometers per hour off-road, has a 45mm cannon, which is one of the bigger reserve tier guns, has 70mm penetration, explosive filler, it doesn't have any armor mind, it can be hull broken, and only has three very cramped crew members, but it's so incredibly obviously a step above most reserve tier tanks, even the other Soviet reserve, the T-26, which has the same gun. So here's my first proposal for today. Now this tank wouldn't be a scout tank, it's a tier 1 tracked vehicle to replace the BT-5 as Russia's new reserve machine. Fold the BT-5 in with the BT-7, put it at 1.3, maybe move the BT-7 up to 1.7, and the new reserve would be the BT-2. This is effectively the same tank, same engine, same hull as far as I know, but it mounted a 37mm cannon, which is basically the gold standard at reserved here, and has around 20mm less penetration than the 45mm 20k cannon, it's actually the same cannon found on the German reserve, the Panzer 3B. This puts it more on par with the other reserve vehicles, although still way better than the French one, and remember Russia still has the T26 with the 45mm, but on a much slower tank, so they'd have the lightning fast BT-2 with less penetration, or the slower T-26 with the better gun. I think this would be great, let me know what you think, but now time to get on to some proper scout tanks and armoured cars. 
Actually, before we go on, I want to mention the A20 and A32. The A20 was basically the first prototype for the T34. It was a light tank, very similar to the T50 we see at battle rating 2.7, Though the A20 had less armour, only 20mm, it was heavily sloped, just like the T50, and carried the familiar 45mm 20k gun that we know from half of Russian Tier 1 tanks. It was never put into mass production, the A32 prototype was chosen to eventually become the legendary T34, but though it was only a prototype, it did actually see active service. During Operation Barbarossa, when the German forces invaded Russia, in the winter, the Soviets had to just send out everything, so even the prototype A-20 they had lying around went out to fight the oncoming German army with the 22nd Tank Brigade, alongside its predecessor, the BT-7, and successor, the T-34. This wouldn't be a scout tank, but as it's a light tank between the BT tanks and the T-50, I thought I'd bring it up, and I think it would make a good, maybe 2.0 light tank, while the prototype that did go on to become the T-34, the A-32, could be folded in with it at battle rating 2.3. This prototype raised the armour to 30mm and mounted the 76mm L10 gun seen on the T28. Eventually a request for even more armour, better optics and a new L11 or F34 was made and a separate prototype A32 was built specifically for this purpose. This tank, which was named A34, then entered serial production and became known as the legendary T34. Now that that's over, finally for some scout tanks and armoured cars. See why I didn't want to go back through all the changes made to scouting again this video? It's going to be long enough. The first armoured car on this list is the BA-1. This is a six-wheeled armoured car capable of travelling up to 63 kph on road with about as much armour as a tissue box but a 37mm cannon in a rear-mounted turret. This is not the same gun that's found on the BT-2 I mentioned earlier, but a more powerful cannon capable of well over 60mm penetration. This will be a good 1.7 armoured car in my opinion, possibly 1.3, but as we know when it comes to vehicles like this, no armour is best armour. And this car is going to have a bit of a bigger silhouette from the side than something like a Daimler for example. Now we're going to speed through these a wee bit. The BA-3 was the same car with a turret of a BT-5 strapped on top, meaning the more powerful 45mm cannon, the 20k. Not a big difference in penetration to the BA-1, but having a greater explosive mass is more important from an armoured car that will be hoping for a lot of side shots. And the BA-6M mounted the turret of the BT-7 rather than the BT-5. These two cars also featured increased speed over the BA-1 with a higher horsepower engine, the BA-3 could sit at 2.0, while the BA-6M would make a nice 2.3. Also at 2.3, possibly in the premium line, would be the BA-10M, the most widely used Soviet armoured car, remaining in service until 1945, with almost 3,500 being built. Yes, I know what you're saying. Why would the more mass-produced and more important vehicle historically be a premium locked behind a paywall. I mean, didn't you say that you disagree with the M8 Greyhound being a premium for this exact reason? Well, yes, but in this case, the BA-10M would actually be less capable than the BA-6M, decreasing the speed by 10 km per hour. Perhaps it would be the BA-10M in the tech tree with the BA-6M as the premium, but with the one vehicle being more famous and the other being more capable, Gaijin could really pick either way. Perhaps one would be an event vehicle instead. Now for a rather interesting vehicle, the BAD-2. Yes, it's bad. <laughs> I won't make that joke again. This was an amphibious armoured car, something we haven't yet seen in War Thunder. It was fitted with a 37mm gun from the BA-1, capable of only 50km per hour off-road and 6 while in water. This could be an interesting, maybe 1.3 vehicle I think. It's just another amphibious vehicle, I don't even know if it would get spotting, but hey, it's an interesting option. A wheeled variant of the SU-76M, which we already see in-game, this is the PCB-76. Developed in 1943, this wheeled SPG mounted the ZIS-3 cannon to a Gaz-63 truck. Of course, the gun has a very limited traverse, and I'm not even sure vehicles such as this would get scouting once again, but being capable of 77 kilometers per hour, it's going to be a nice option for perhaps battle rating even 3.0 if it does get scouting. Now we're skipping up the tech tree a wee bit to battle rating 4.7 with the PT-76. 
But Koala, I hear you say, we already have the PT-76 at a much higher battery rating than 4.7. Well, um, actually, <laughs> you're wrong. See, we have the PT-76B, which features the Zarya two-plane stabilization system for the 76mm gun, but the original PT-76 didn't have this, which would be a significant factor reducing its battle rating. The PT-76s are not all that fast, only 44km per hour, but with a 200mm penetrating heat FS at battle rating 4.7, and the ability to scout targets, what more do you need? Oh, and if you're going to complain, a uh, 200mm cheat FS at 4.7, that's Russian bias. I'll tell you that both the British and French Shermans, both at 4.7, have more than 200mm penetration, so suck it. <laughs> this older PT-76 also did not feature the engine exhaust smoke system, and I know someone is going to bring up that the original 1951 tank wouldn't be firing that heat FS shell and could therefore be lower in battery rating, maybe 3.0, but I'm not so sure on this, let me know what you think down in the comments, perhaps it could be a premium. I'd also like to bring up the Chinese modification of the PT-76, the Type 63, which mounted an 85mm gun, although I'm not sure on what shells this thing would fire, and I kind of don't want Gaijin to add it, because I do think that we're going to get a Chinese tech tree one day, relatively soon, hopefully Sweden first, but just know that that would be an option, maybe for as high as 6.0 dependent on shells. There was also a PT-76 variant armed with a 130mm rocket launcher with 16 rockets, kind of reminiscent of a higher tier Katusha or BM-824. So this might be a fun meme premium at a battle rating of 5.0 to 6.0, depending on how good or not those rockets are. Next up, the UAZ-469 Jeep armed with the SPG-9 73mm recoilless rifle. This is basically a recoilless rifle version of the gun found on the BMP-1, a battery rating 7.3. It fires the same rocket, so 300mm penetration, although this vehicle can travel up to 100km per hour. It didn't feature any ATGMs, however, so I think it could sit at the same battery rating of 7.3, preceding the BMP-1 in the tech tree, although honestly, I think the BMP-1 could move up. I mean, even stock, it can one-shot an MBT-70 from the front, and with the reworked scouting ability, which once again I covered in the French Light Tanks and Armoured Cars video, I did say that all scout capable vehicles should move up, so maybe the BMP-1 should go as high as 8.0 perhaps, while well, obviously the BMP-2 and Object 906 would move up substantially higher. The UAZ-469 is quite reminiscent of some vehicles in the Italian tech tree, although it's more recognisable as, you know, a car, a road worthy car, and I think it would be a very interesting option for 7.3. Next, an 8-wheeled tank destroyer, because every nation needs one of these. This is the Jalo S. This tank was designed in the 1970s as a replacement for the outdated PT-76, and features an 85mm gun mounted on a BTR-70 chassis. It's capable of travelling at 80km per hour on peeved surfaces, and can also swim at 9km per hour, although I've got to admit, I would never actually want to be taking this vehicle amphibious, not in real life. But it's another amphibious armoured car in War Thunder, which we haven't gotten yet. Now the gun is quite similar to that found on the Object 906, not exactly the same, but I think it would be likely to fire the same rounds, which oddly enough really aren't that great rounds for 8.0, and we said the Object 906 would go even higher. However, it's mostly the 4 second autoloader and stabiliser that puts the Object 906 at such a high battle rating neither of which the Jalo S have, so I think even with the Object 906 potentially moving up as I stated earlier, the Jalo S could sit at 7.7 or 8.0, but I don't think it would go any higher than that, it would be the lowest battle rating wheeled tank destroyer of this type. Of course that is unless it fires some kind of 85mm APFSDS, but that's still not going to penetrate very highly, and the vehicle was unsuccessful specifically because it lacked penetration. A vehicle I just remembered as I was editing this video together, so I'm chucking it in in post, but the Gaz 50 is a BTR-70 with a turret of a BMP-1 strapped to the top. Same 73mm gun with the same rounds, same as the UAZ-469 with the recoilless rifle, along with the ATGM. I think this vehicle could make for an interesting premium or event vehicle as it was never accepted into service. 
Either that or the UAZ-469 could be the event vehicle, while this vehicle having a higher top speed than the BMP-1 but the same weapon system would likely sit a step above. Remember, it would only have the stock ATGM that the BMP-1 has, not the one that it gets when upgraded to the BMP-1P. Next is one I know many of you are interested in, and so am I. The BMD-4. A lighter comparator to the BMP meant for airdropping, the BMD series mirrored the BMPs in many ways, with the BMD-1 featuring the 73mm and the BMD-2 sharing the BMP-2's stabilised 30mm autocannon. However, the BMD-4, a vehicle that's been quite highly anticipated for War Thunder, this thing is armed to the teeth, featuring both a 100mm cannon and the 30mm autocannon side by side, along with a further coaxial machine gun and a top mounted 9M113 Conker's ATGM. Jeez, how many weapons do you need? <laughs> The thing is, and this is something I've always brought up in the past, this gun, this 100mm cannon, fires no armour piercing rounds, only high explosive. And 100mm high explosive isn't going to do all that much. Nonetheless, with my having suggested many light scout vehicles of this type and around this battle rating, and having buffed them with my suggested improvements to the scouting mechanic, meaning that more of them would be likely to be played in any match, the 100mm HE shell might be quite useful. Now, it's clear what you'd be supposed to do with this kind of tank, at least from a War Thunder sense, and that is to use the ATGM to attack main battle tanks from the front and at long ranges from the sides, the 30mm autocannon to attack MBTs from the sides at close ranges, and a conserve ammunition for both weapons in order to use them that way, using the 100mm high explosive shell to deal with other light vehicles whenever you can use it, other tank destroyers and scout vehicles, SPAAGs, that sort of thing. That would also allow the B1 Centauro with the Romor armour package to actually get some use out of it. That ERA would work against the 100mm HE. But I have my doubts that many players would have the awareness to limit themselves in this way. I mean, if there's a Gepard or Type 89 staring you in the face, you're probably just going to open up with a 30mm and mow him down as quickly as possible. You've also got that 30mm to help deal with helicopters, although I'm not exactly sure how high it would be able to traverse, it is locked to the 100mm, almost like a coax, they can elevate separately. Regardless of these factors however, the BMD-4 is quite a well known vehicle used extensively by the modern Russian military, so it seems a shame to miss out on it, and at the very least it would provide a bit of a filler vehicle that would be played and likely would be fun to play for a video, so there's always that. I think Fly would enjoy it, and I definitely would as well. It would also be the second Russian Federation vehicle in game, which is pretty cool. It should be impenetrable to machine guns from the front, and travels at 70 km per hour on road, achieving 43 kph off road and 10 km per hour in the water. I think it'd be good for at least 8.7, if not 9.0, remember that I suggested with the much buffed scouting mechanic that scout vehicles and support vehicles go up in battle rating, so all the IFVs, the Bradley, Warrior, Bagel Panzer, etc, they'd all go up. Now for the last wheeled vehicle on this list, the BTR-90. Now originally, I wasn't sure any of the BTR vehicles actually carried a weapon other than the 30mm autocannon seen on the BMP-2. Besides the Jalo S we mentioned earlier, that is. But the last of this series of eight-wheeled Russian IFVs, the BTR-90, carried alongside the 30mm the 9M113 Conker's ATGM, which we already know in-game actually, the BMPs have it. So the BTR-90 is basically a wheeled BMP-2 without the amphibious capabilities, but with a top speed of 100km per hour on road, it would be perhaps a 9.0 vehicle, maybe even 9.3, depending on whether or not it has any more powerful ammunition for its 30mm. And of course, the same goes for the BMD-4. Like the BMD, this is also a vehicle produced since the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Now we just need the T-90A, huh? We'd have a full Russian Federation lineup, that would be sick. And that's it for this list. I'm sure there aren't any more. <laughs> no, I'm joking, of course. Time to talk about the Sprut SD. The 2S25 Sprut SD is a modern light tank which features a 125mm 2A45 gun on top of the hull of a BMD. This gun is capable of firing all the same ammunition types as the Russian MBTs with their 2A46 gun. The only reason for the different designation is that this gun is designed to be a towed piece. They're actually towed behind MTLBs, which we have in game as the 9P149 Storm S. 
The vehicle itself, being a BMD chassis and hull, is capable of the same 70km per hour top speed, which is around the top speed of the T80, and although it has paper thin armour, it's going to be balanced up pretty highly. The vehicle is a cross between a light tank focused on the scouting and reconnaissance role, speeding in, getting some scouting done, and not really coming under fire at all, and a tank destroyer outfitted with a very large anti-tank gun, really a glass cannon, like the Object 120. Originally designed and first produced back in the 1980s, the Sprut SD didn't actually end up entering service until 2005, which raises some questions about what sort of rounds it would receive and whether or not it would be considered a Soviet or Russian vehicle, but of course that doesn't really matter to us. As for ammunition, I'd suggest that it be given the same ammo as the T-64A and T-72A with 3BM22 as its top shell, and be placed at probably 9.7, although this earlier variant would not be capable of firing 80 GMs out of the main gun, it just didn't carry the guidance systems. The later Sprut SDM-1, however, did have this capability, or should I say does have this capability, and could possibly see 3BM42 Mango, the T-80U's top shell, or even, if we get it one day, 3BM46 Spinet, which I've suggested the T90A carry if it's implemented in the next update. This would likely put it above the T90A, however, definitely above the T80U, and remember that as a vehicle designed for support, even though it has no armour, it has speed, mobility, and the capability of scouting, and so it should not have firepower on par with MBTs of its tier, but rather on par with MBTs of one or two BR steps below it. That's its balancing hamper. So whether or not we'd ever get the Sprut STM-1 depends on how modern a tier Gaijin gives us. If you lads will remember my Modern Tanks and War Thunder series where I talked about the M1A2 Abrams, T90M, Type 10, etc, I outlined how modern tanks like that could be balanced up, and I'd say that if the Sprut STM-1 has 3BM42 Mango, then it should be placed one step above the T-80U alongside the T-90A, which would have Sfinets. If the Sprut SDM-1 gets Sfinets, however, and the 9M119 Reflex 80GM, then it should go one step above the T-90A, alongside the T-72B3 and T-80BVM. So this is a vehicle we definitely wouldn't get for a long time, but the older model Sprut SD could sit nicely at 9.7 in tier 6, with rounds equivalent to the 9.3 main battle tanks, and there's no reason we couldn't have any vehicle up to this point in the very next update. Anyway lads, that is going to be it for this video, I hope you have enjoyed, and that if you did, you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon, join the 360 squad, and be sure to let me know your thoughts on these suggestions in the comment section below. I did leave several vehicles out of today's list, like for example the BTR-80, because I don't feel like Russia especially needs it, although I did mention the Fox in the British light scout tank and armoured car video, despite it also being only equipped with the 30mm cannon from the nation's IFV, the Warrior. It's another 100 kph armoured car, a bit smaller and a bit more useful for the recon role however. There are also plenty of armoured cars with different ATGMs mounted on them that we could have, I didn't really want to go in depth into all of them here, this video was getting long enough. They're also a wee bit of a different style of vehicle. There's also the BMP3 and several other vehicles that I left out, specifically because they feature fire and forget anti-tank missiles, not the optically guided ones we have currently, but I'm sure in time we will see fire and forget ATGMs, so if that is to happen, I bet we will see tanks like the BMP3, the Boomerang, etc. Then there's the BMPT Terminator, which originally I was going to bring up in this video, even though it's far from a light tank, it's better armoured on the hull than a T90, but it is quite definitely a support type vehicle. Perhaps that's a topic for another video, however. Remember that our giveaway is ending this weekend, so if you want to go into the draw to win a framed MBT poster, then go and check out my recent T90 video for all the details. Make sure to come follow me on Twitter and Twitch, join the Discord and check out Patreon, or join here on YouTube if you wish to support the channel further. Thank you lads all for watching, have a lovely good day, and always remember to keep your bagpipes to hand, keep your kilt on, and I shall see you in the next one. I say a wee thank you to these lads for supporting me on Patreon. Captain Fubar, DA261, Geesley Gadarsen, and Dark Recon. You lads are bra. If you wish to join them, come check out the link in the description below. Thank you.